Good morning. So today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We call it the long, long green season. Long. And we actually have 20, 20 more Sundays, not that we're wanting to hurry it, because the next season after Pentecost is the season of Advent. So we don't want to rush things because November 27th is still a long ways away. But as I mentioned, this is what we in the church call the long growing season. And you may wonder, what are we growing into? What is this season of Pentecost all about? And I'd like to think that we are growing in our faith, in our relationship with Jesus, and in expansion of our communities. In our stories of scripture today, we heard metaphors about growth and growing. They're found everywhere in Holy Scripture, from vineyards to fig trees to fields of grain to seed that's scattered on the path, on the rocks, and on the good soil. We hear over and over again about planting and sowing, reaping and tending, of separating the wheat from the chaff, and most importantly, of producing good fruit. Now, we may wonder why there were so many examples or stories of growth and growing in Scripture. It doesn't necessarily fit with our society today, but the societies that were hearing these stories and were learning and the agri were agrarian culture or agriculture focused. So those stories of planting and growing, of reaping and sowing, were easily understood. So in today's Gospel from Luke, when Jesus sends out 70 others to go ahead of him, into every town before he goes to them. These 70 would most likely understand his words when he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Jesus knows that there is risk involved for these followers in going into towns and neighborhoods. He even tells them, don't talk to anyone on the way. Wait till you get there and then see what happens. He knows that they might not be welcomed or received with hospitality. So Jesus tells them what to do. He says, if you are received with peace, be sure to stay there and accept the hospitality that is offered to you. And not only that, cure the sick and tell them that the kingdom of God has come near. In other words, share God's shalom, God's peace, God's well-being, God's salvation. And then Jesus also says, if you are not welcome, leave immediately. Just walk away. And when you get to the outskirts of town, I love this line, take your shoes off and shake the dust off your feet and tell them, we wipe off the dust that clings to our feet in protest against you. We have to think about that part of Jesus's phrase when we think about him being the good shepherd, the lamb, the quiet, the loving. He tells them, tell them in protest that you are not going to take a single speck of dust with you because they did not welcome you. But then also tell them, just so you know, the kingdom of God has come near. And I would add, but you didn't welcome it. Jesus didn't tell the 70 to go out and tell the people in all the town, tell them all about me. He didn't say that. He didn't say you should tell them about all the lessons you've learned from me. You shouldn't necessarily tell them about your own transformation. Jesus says to them, share the peace, the shalom of God. Share God's peace, God's loving kindness, God's well-being, God's salvation and wholeness. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And as I pondered upon these lessons today, I, I thought about what our church has been up, for, up to for the last year nearly. We have been engaged in, as you know, the diocesan effort entitled Tending Our Soil. We have, as a parish, reviewed our history, shared our stories about coming to St. Nick's, what has kept us here, what we love about this community. We have put our timeline on the wall from our very beginnings in the 90s to today. And we have updated and we have also plotted our own addresses on that map in the side of the church and seen where we, we live. 
and our committee of five has determined we have three neighborhood clusters where we are, and we've toured those neighborhoods and tried to figure out what these neighborhoods are all about. Where might we be able to have a presence, whether it's on a bulletin board or maybe a possible blessing of the animals in those communities? How can we reach out to our neighborhood and our neighbors? And finally, we've updated so far our mission statement and our vision statement. We say that we are becoming a beloved community of God where everyone belongs. We wanted, as we created the mission statement, and you've read this in our periodicals, that we wanted to make sure that we were consistent with what we've always said we are, a place to become and a place to belong. And we wanted to add that phrase, God's community, a place to belong and a place to become to God's beloved community. Otherwise, it's just a place to belong and a place to become like a, a country club. But we are more than that. We are striving to follow Jesus and to live into his radical acceptance and love of everyone. So if we look at our Tending Our Soil arc for this year, we have, in fact, in agricultural terms, surveyed the landscape. And we have begun tending the soil to find out where the soil is fertile. Our next steps include making a plan for where and what type of seeds we want to plant so that the harvest will be plentiful. But like the first 12 disciples, Jesus sends out more. Jesus sends out 70. And so as we go into this coming year, my friends, all of us are going to be asked to participate. I wish we had more than 70 here today, but we have what we have. And what we know is that this is a community of love, a place to become closer to one another and closer to God, and a place to belong. No matter what has happened in your life, no matter what burdens you carry, this is a place to belong to a beloved community of God. Everyone's participation is going to be important and has been important. And like the 70, our mission is to help people know this beloved community of God to invite them to experience what we have here. So I want to set a charge or a request or a, a goal for us this summer during this long growing season. Think about someone who you know who may be thinking about attending church but really doesn't know where to go. I know we have trouble talking about church in our faith communities. We talk about everything else. And for the Tending Our Soil group, and we will share this with some with all of you on our website once we get the link there was a great video we saw at our last meeting which talked about it showed actually a neighbor tending his garden and his neighbor coming home from church carrying his bible and you could hear the neighbor who was tending the garden saying he's going to talk to me about church he's going to ask me about church i'm really going to say yes to him asking me to go to church and the person carrying the bible said well it looks like you have a really nice garden it's a beautiful day would you like to come over? And the, the, the guy in the garden's like, he's gonna ask me, he's gonna ask me. And then the guy holding the Bible said, for goulash? We had to laugh, right? We have to get over our discomfort, if we have any, of telling people about St. Nick's, about this community that we love so much, about the beautiful setting that we have, about the community of faith that we, have, that we are here, and just say, you know, would you like to come to church with me one Sunday? We have a really nice, open, and affirming church. Whatever you want to say, whatever touches your heart about how this community has fed you. But that's my request for the summer. See if you can have a conversation with someone and say, you know, I found this great place. I'd love for you to join me. Because that, my friends, is how we grow this community. It's not by me, and it's not by the bishop. It's by all of us. You can even, when you get the sermon on Sunday, if you feel so inclined, you can send that to someone else and say, hey, listen to this. This is my invitation to you to come to church with me on Sunday. It's, it's up to us. Jesus sends those 70 out and says, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. And like those who went out to those towns before Jesus, some will find it a gift to be received, and some will say, no, thank you. 
But that's not our concern. Our job is to plant seeds and let God do the rest. We are the sowers with God's help. So we plant the seeds and let God do the rest. St. Nicholas, our mission is to become or becoming a beloved community of God's love where everyone belongs. People are yearning for a place to become and a place to belong. So I invite you to pray about who in your circle may be yearning to experience what you've experienced here at St. Nicholas. Let us pray that God will give us the strength and the courage to plant seeds of the shalom of God, the peace of God that passes all understanding, so that we may plant those seeds within our neighborhood, our communities, and our circle of friends. May God give us the strength and the will and the joy to do so. Amen.